Do you get uncomfortable when people talk about Linux? Do you tell people that you hate Linux, but it's really that you don't understand Linux, or you aren't sure if you like Linux, or you really aren't even sure if Linux is really that air conditioning company or something to do with computers? Well, you are in the right spot because in this video and the videos to follow, we're going to learn just enough about Linux so that you can determine whether you really do hate it or if it's something you want to learn more about and maybe uh, do on a day-to-day -day basis included in your career, that sort of a thing. Now, the other really cool thing is that when we're done together, you'll be able to actually get a certification from the Linux Professional Institute if you want. You don't have to, but it's something that you can actually take a test and exam so you know that you know a little bit about Linux enough that you can have a conversation at the water cooler and not feel like you're making stuff up. Anyway, if that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned because we are going to learn about the essentials of Linux. Now, the first thing we need to cover is understanding that Linux is really just the very basics. And it's the stuff that actually runs right on the hardware of a computer, a server, or whatever it's running on. But it doesn't include other software. It's basically just the, the interface between the hardware and what other software can do on top of a Linux system. So if somebody says to you, well, Linux is just a kernel, that just means that the part that's actually called Linux is the very tiny part that runs on the hardware. Everything else runs on top of Linux. So Linux isn't technically an operating system. Linux is a kernel and then there's software that you put on top of it to turn it into a full operating system. I'll explain a little bit more what I mean as we go along, but you can find Linux in a number of places. For example, it runs on PCs. That's probably what you're picturing the most is that it's running on, on a PC. It can be a desktop PC. Uh, it can be a server. And generally the difference between a desktop and a server is that a server, a Linux server specifically, uh, does not have a GUI interface. There's nothing to point and click, right? It's just text and it's running super efficiently with a, not a lot of overhead. And that's generally what we talk about with a server install, but you can actually run server software on a desktop computer with a GUI. It, that works too. Uh, the other thing you might see it on the laptop. A lot of times we'll, uh, in fact, if you're at my house, you'll see a laptop on my lap while I'm watching a movie. Generally it's a Linux laptop so I can look up, oh, what else was that actor in? <laughs> um, then I'll switch over here to the embedded systems. You probably heard the term embedded and that, and that just means that it's an operating system or a kernel that lives on very small, slow, specialized hardware. Things like uh, a Kindle. If you've ever read a book on a Kindle, that's actually running Linux. If you watch TV using a Roku, that's running Linux. Uh, if you have an Android cell phone, you're not an iPhone user, you have an Android, that's Linux. Android is Linux and it's running on cell phones or mobile phones, wherever you are in the world, depending on what you might call those things. And I actually put this one, the Raspberry Pi, which you've undoubtedly heard of a Raspberry Pi. And no, I don't mean the, the pie that makes seeds get stuck in your teeth, but the actual tiny little computer Raspberry Pi, it's a PC. You can run it as a PC, but it's also sort of embedded because it's very small and, and very efficient. So I'm not sure exactly where Raspberry Pi lives on this landscape, uh, but it is something that can very easily run Linux. And then one of the ones that's ever more popular right now, and you probably hear about it all the time, is Linux in the cloud. Now, what is the cloud? Well, the cloud is just other people's computers that you can run stuff on and rent time from their servers uh, for your own personal or business uses. But the cool thing about the cloud is that Linux is everywhere. It runs underneath. So uh, you, most of those cloud services that you interact with in a web browser or whatever, they generally run their software on Linux because it's free and efficient and fast and all that stuff. If you create an instance on a cloud service, like if you go to Amazon or you go to Google and you get, you start up an instance, that's just a virtual machine that's running in the cloud on Linux. And usually the instances that you start up are Linux um, and they're running on Linux. It's just Linux all the way down. Uh, and even when you just use a service from a cloud provider, like if you go to AWS and you just use one of their services, like, I don't know, their DNS service or something, chances are they're running that service 
on Linux behind the scenes and you just have access to their Linux servers because it's super, super efficient. It's very fast. And most importantly, when it comes to scaling things that you want to make cheap, it is free as well. And that allows us to um, have a lot more flexibility. Now, the one little thing that I should, there is a caveat there. So, you know, if you want an asterisk on the screen, we can put that there. Uh, a lot of times if you're on Azure, Microsoft Azure, which is their cloud-based platform, a lot of that stuff is Linux and Microsoft is adopting Linux more and more every day, but you can actually spin up Windows stuff in Azure. So it might not be Linux because to be clear, even though the line is starting to gray, uh, Linux and Microsoft Windows are two different operating systems entirely, even though now you can run Ubuntu in Windows Linux services or something. I don't know. It, it gets a great thing, but Windows is different from Linux. And so on Microsoft Azure, you might be actually spinning up Windows machines or Windows instances instead of just Linux instances. And so, like I said, when you think of Linux, you're probably thinking of Linux as an operating system, right? With the kernel, but then also enough stuff on top of it to become an operating system. And usually when people are talking about Linux, that is what they're talking about, if I'm being completely honest. But Oh, but there's a but. There are so many different distributions of Linux. That means that they're all running the same Linux kernel underneath, but they've piled on their own software on top of it. And they come in several camps. So Debian is its own operating system, or its own, yeah, its own operating system that runs Linux. Debian uh, it was started by a guy named um, Ian and his wife, Deb. Debian, kind of cool, right? Uh, but a lot of other distributions are based on Debian. So they take the bits of Debian that they like and they build on top of it. The most popular being Ubuntu and all of Ubuntu's variants like Ubuntu Mate and Kubuntu and Zubuntu and and there's a bunch of different Ubuntu flavors uh, that are based on Ubuntu. And again, Ubuntu is based on Debian. And you can usually tell if a system is based on Debian because when you install packages, like let's say we install a web server like Apache or something onto the Linux operating system, if it uses .deb packaging, that's a good sign that it's Debian based because that's where the Deb came from is a Debian originally invented those Debian or those Deb packages. Uh, on the other really, really common flavor is the best word I can think of to describe it is going to be a red hat based Linux operating system. Now this is generally identifiable because they use RPM packaging as opposed to the Deb packaging that you find in Debian based operating systems. Uh, the RPM, uh, which stands for Red Hat Package Manager, um, has several uh, distributions that use that as their base. Uh, for example, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, RHEL, uh, obviously is Red Hat based. Uh, Fedora is made by the folks at Red Hat. It's based on those Red Hat packaging schemes. CentOS, uh, which is the community enterprise OS, which is going through some changes of late, but it's still based on uh, Red Hat. And there are others as well. And then the other one that I wanna cover, and I feel like I should change my pen color because this is in white. So. Uh, the other one that I want to talk about are just a whole list of other things that aren't based on Debian. They're not based on uh, Red Hat. They are just other operating systems built on top of the Linux kernel. Things like uh, Arch Linux, Slackware, SUSE, um, Android is another one. That's, a, that's an entire operating system that runs like on your mobile devices, uh, but it is an a Linux operating system in and of itself that runs on top of the Linux kernel and uh, other embedded systems. Like I said, Kindle and Roku and, and probably uh, every electronic device that you don't think about having an operating system, chances are it's running embedded Linux of some sort because that's generally the thing that people do nowadays. So anyway, there are a ton of different kinds of Linux operating systems because remember, Linux is just that underlying kernel, that tiny bit of thing that runs right on the hardware and you put other software on top of it to make it a complete operating system so you can interact with it. And I'll just show you a quick list or not list, a bunch of screenshots of the different distributions, just a handful. You don't have to know them all, uh, but it's nice to know that they all do pretty much the same thing and it's nice to get a look. So let's just take a little uh, tour here. This is what Ubuntu looks like when you install 
install Ubuntu and you start it up for the first time, it looks kind of like this. Uh, CentOS, this is actually a little bit older version of CentOS. This is CentOS version seven, uh, but it, it looks pretty much like this. This uses some sort of GNOME uh, front end, the desktop manager, some sort of a GNOME version. Uh, this is Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Remember I said RHEL is based on Red Hat, duh, because Red Hat Enterprise Linux, if this is their main distribution, it looks very similar to CentOS because again, they're basically the same code. Uh, let's see another one here. This is Linux Mint. Uh, Linux Mint is very, is a very, very popular, uh, a very, very popular Ubuntu based operating system. And uh, it just has its own little flair. It manages packages a little bit differently. It's, it's known to be fairly easy to install and maintain, which is nice. And it looks pretty slick. Uh, this is OpenSUSE. Uh, this is uh, pronounced that way, by the way, SUSE, OpenSUSE. And this is a German-based uh, operating system that actually, it, there's English translations. You don't have to know German to use it, but this is fairly popular. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure underneath the, I haven't, I haven't used OpenSUSE in a number of years, but I think it uses RPM under the hood, but then it uses its own package management system called Zipper to actually install packages. Uh, again, uses the same Linux kernel underneath, but uh, this is OpenSUSE. Uh, looks a little different. Scientific Linux. I've actually never used Scientific Linux myself, uh, but this is an operating system designed for uh, things that scientists might want to use. Probably has a lot of math tools and, and things like that in it. Uh, this is Raspbian. Now, this is one that I, I actually put towards the end because this is a distribution that is designed specifically to run on Raspberry Pi. The, the difference between Raspberry Pi and a regular computer is that it uses an ARM-based processor and an ARM-based processor is different than uh, like a, a standard laptop or a standard desktop computer. It's just more efficient. It uses a, a different architecture underneath. It still uses the Linux kernel, but it's compiled for this particular opera or for this particular uh, type of CPU. And anyway, Raspbian is one that is specifically designed to run on Raspberry Pi. And then this last one, uh, you probably didn't even think about this before, but if you have seen Chromebooks, like in schools, they're very popular in Chrome, in schools, Chromebooks are, uh, they are just basically an operating system that is not much more uh, than a web browser, right? I mean, Chrome is a web browser and Chrome OS is a an operating system that is built on Linux. Again, it's running Linux on like a laptop. And then basically you do everything inside a Google Chrome a browser, but it is running Linux. So this is considered another operating system is Chrome OS. That was just a quick run through about where you might see Linux, where Linux is running, where you might Linux and not know it was Linux. Uh, and we talked about distributions, which are really important to understand that distributions are built on top of the Linux kernel. The Linux kernel is the same regardless of the distribution that you're running. It's that underlying core that makes Linux Linux and everything else on top uh, is just uh, software that runs on top of the Linux kernel. So remember, learn everything, do what you love and be kind. Stick with us. We'll learn more about Linux and I'll see you next time.